Hi, welcome back to the Camp Chaos Chronicles. What we're going to do today on the Tool Shed Edition is to take a look at an area that I spend a lot of time in, that of the welding fabrication area, specifically the welding bench. Dang it! So why are we taking the time to talk about a bench? Well, the fact is that if you've got a small fabrication shop uh, or you're a young guy starting out or you're an amateur that uh, has limited space, probably working on your projects on the floor, wrestling around with uh, tools and clamps and material, trying to get the things done that you want to do. And that's how I spent about 15 years uh, in this room right here. I basically put a garage door in the end of it and wired a few outlets and uh, and that's that was my life for a while. But then I figured out that, you know what, that may be how Neanderthal man worked on his fabrication projects, but I think we can do better. So this was actually one of the first tools that I made to make the quality and the uh, experience of my projects a little bit better. What is this thing? Well, First of all, it's made out of steel. Now, if you're working on a wooden bench right now, you know how hot metal and wood works out. It can be made to work, but you know, it's, it's not the best. Plus the fact that wood tends to deflect as metal cools and, and uh, we can do better. So the top of this bench is made out of quarter inch thick, hot rolled steel. Now there's one reason why I bought that for this project, and that was that it was cheaper than cold rolled steel. But there are some advantages to this that I, was come to, I would come to appreciate later. And first of all, the scale on hot rolled steel tends to, it seems to repel the spatter so that I've got a, a, a broad chisel that I use to just sort of rake over the top of it, and the, generally the stuff pops right off. Some cases you got to do a little little grinding to get a tree, but uh, usually it just scrapes right away. The other thing is that the scale on the outside seems to prevent rust. Uh, if rust occurs on this bench, it's usually in an area where I've had to do a little bit of grinding. So, and that's another big deal. Now, if we look at the top more closely, we'll see that there are holes drilled six inches on six inches. And these are uh, drilled and tapped to half inch by 13 thread. And the reason for that is that when you're welding material, you really need to clamp it down to something solid. And that's what I use that for. I've got pieces of square tube that are drilled, that have holes drilled in them with threaded rod that I use to, to lock things down with. Also, the hold downs that you would use on a milling machine uh, have a half inch by 13 inch thread on them. So, so those are used, I use those quite a bit. In fact, the rotisserie was the first thing that, first large thing that I built on this bench and uh, those things proved invaluable. For two reasons, first of all, the set that I bought for the welding bench worked great. Plus I have another one in the machine shop for the vertical milling machine that I, that I used and I had plenty of, of uh, clamping capability. Now the rest of the bench is made out of material that I had on hand. I believe the, the square stock that are in the corners and on the side and also in the cross piece in the back is 11 gauge, two and a half, two and a quarter square steel, mild steel tubing. Uh, just happened to have it on hand, so that's what I used. On the two sides, I've got some round pieces because I was out of square, I just happened to have some, uh, some round steel tube left over from the track car roll cage project. So I use that and it turns out that it was convenient to use those to, to store C clamps and other clamps that, were, that worked in, in that sort of situation. And that worked well for, for quite some time. I eventually came up with another solution to that that we're going to be looking at in another episode. Now, if you look at the front of the bench, the cross piece that's in the back isn't there. 
We've got space underneath the bench to store the MIG welder, the plasma cutter, and my little bandsaw down there out of the way. And I do that with all my benches, provide as much storage space underneath as possible. You'll also notice that hanging in the middle of the bench on the top is a spa welder. Uh, I'm not a real big fan of that location. I think what I would do or will do in the future is to move those hooks that it's hanging from over to the side so it's out of the way because it does interfere a little bit with the uh, moving of the tools in and out from underneath the bench. You're going to need a vise. Uh, this is one that I actually got out of the trash at a business because it was cracked, which didn't really affect its utility at all. And what you see in the vise, that T-shaped thing, is something I made up out of some roll cage bends that were not used that I used for some simple metal forming operations that uh, I use that a lot more than I ever thought I would. When I was first designing this, I thought it would be a good thing to on the end put a little shelf in there that I could actually put a toolbox in. However, when I got a hold of the plasma cutter, that turned out to not be an option. And when I got the TIG welder, I bought a cabinet for the TIG welder. And all the tools that I need for the welding area are either stored in the drawers underneath it or on the storage rack that I've that I fabricated for the welding area that we'll look at in another episode. If you look around the base of the, the bench, you'll see that there's uh, electrical conduit and outlets at each corner. And this is really convenient because when you're working on larger things, like in the middle of the shop, like I'm, I've got this thing positioned right now, uh, it's really convenient to have outlets at the corners and as you can see the orange cord on the other side there uh, just plug the bench into the wall and then you can have three or four tools on the top of the bench at different locations and this is the bench that I use to build the rotisserie that the champ car is on right now I'm not sure what else I can tell you but I got I gotta tell you that you don't have to build one this big even if you made one that was two feet by two feet that would be a tremendous addition to your operation. And uh, I like this design. I think it's something that, that works really well and I think that you could probably use in your shop. So if you like what we're doing here, like us, subscribe to us, follow us on Facebook, and we'll see you the next time on the Camp Chaos Chronicles.